Good evening and welcome to the Greg Thompson Sports Show. Tonight, we are going to be doing a 32 GM live mock draft with our friends over at walkthemock.com. I am joined by Thomas Delaus of Buffalo Late Night and our friend Chris Seth here with us at the Greg Thompson Sports Show. And tonight, we're going to be going through kind of talking about each of the uh, different picks as they happen. We've already had some drama right off the bat. The GM from Chicago has shocked the world and gone Drake May and let Washington simply uh, snag Caleb Williams with the number two pick. So I, I like it. People are already shaking things up. <laughs> We've got uh, a flurry of, of chat discussion going on with trade offers and people already trying to move up and down. Uh, so we'll kind of be going back and forth monitoring here. I know the GM for Atlanta already reached out talking about wanting to move the eighth pick. I think a bunch of people are are bidding for it. I don't know that we're in position for a bidding war, but Thomas, I'll start with you. What are, oh, here we go. What are the Patriots doing? Jalen, I, I, it's got to be Jaden Daniels, right? Okay, Jaden Daniels. Yeah. Um, So, you know, as we get to now the first three quarterbacks off the board, I know, Thomas, you've talked on your show and, and some on Twitter about kind of the Julio Jones type godfather offer that it would take to go up and get one of these star receivers. What What is your case for that? Hey, I know it's, you know, I, I think everything I've seen would be like our first and second next year's first, maybe next year's fourth. That was about the equivalent of what Julio Jones went for. Maybe we have to include this year's fourth something like that, but it, it would be the main three things is our first and second this year, next year's first, and probably a little bit extra. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you're talking, it's going to be darn near prohibitive, yeah. but I think it just comes down to in this situation. If you feel that this is a guy that transcends those values of the pick and what you get in other rounds, that I, I think the case can be made. I mean, if you get to nine and Malik Neighbors or Roma Dunes falls to that position, it's it's hard for me to sit there and say trading a few extra picks to get to somebody that can just let me interrupt you real quick here. Uh so Thor, who anybody has to follow Thor Norkelson from uh that is representing the Vikings here, he traded up wow. to get JJ McCarthy and the fastest pick I've ever seen was the Cardinals <laughs> just smashing the button on Marvin Harrison Jr. Like no discussion, no other topics. Uh, can you imagine <laughs> if Jim Harbaugh and Justin Herbert stumble into just being given Marvin Harrison Jr. at the fifth pick? It'd be unbelievable. Yep. Unbelievable. I mean, four quarterbacks, four quarterbacks and coming so, off the top is so incredible, though. If we're going to paint a picture, and whether this is, again, I, I don't think any of us think it's likely that we see some crazy leap up the board, but even with whether it's making that a possibility or you're simply trying to draw up the best case scenario for the most talent at the positions we want falling to the bills, what you want to see is as many teams getting crazy about quarterbacks as early as possible. We want those four, honestly, to go in the top four. We want teams to then get nervous about Bo Nix or Michael Penix. We want teams feeling like they need to get back into uh, the mid to late first to get one of those guys because that's the path where whichever wide receiver we, we like here or one of the pass rushers or whatever it might be, if we want our options available to us, the, we want as many – so we, we talked about it in our cover one staff chat last night. We want as many quarterbacks, offensive tackles, cornerbacks, and tight ends to go as possible. So, like, you know, Bowers is going to go. I don't think there's anybody else who's going to be in that neighborhood. There's a big drop-off after him. The the position that a lot of Bills fans and, and honestly, a lot of us at cover one haven't been as clued in on is offensive tackle because we're not really looking at it. Some people have, you know, so this group here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this site has seven offensive tackles graded in the first round. I've seen a couple that have eight. The next pick is in for the Giants, Romans. So at that, I, if, you know, I think it's most likely that the first seven picks are pretty scripted and it's some order of the four quarterbacks and the three receivers. And it's just, does somebody 
jockey to trade up at, you know, is JJ McCarthy four, five, six, seven, which one of those does he go to? But I think it's super likely that those are the first seven guys off the board. Um, and especially with the dunes going ahead of neighbors, I, I guess I'll be pretty shocked if this next pick isn't Malik neighbors or someone trading for Malik neighbors. And to your point, Greg, moving up to, I mean, seven at this point, you're talking this year's first next year's first next year's third. Uh, I mean, a couple of the fourths probably you're talking it's going to cost a, a heavy heavy price yeah and uh, don't get me wrong uh, a player like malik neighbors or roma dunes is is incredibly intoxicating the idea of giving that to josh Allen sounds amazing um but it's still a ton so right now uh i my guess i'm gonna pop in the room chat here with the gms uh there's gotta be some pretty hot discussion of the Falcons GM is mad because he's now lost his uh, leverage <laughs> because now the <laughs> Titans pick has all the leverage. Cause all, you know, okay. not that Joe Walt and Dallas Turner aren't very, very good players. Um, but you know, that having that last player out of that top group of the quarterbacks and the three receivers, uh, he was planning on kind of auctioning off that pick at eight. And now, it certainly looks like that would be the Titans. And I, I do think that's actually in play on draft night. I think that Titans pick is – I actually don't think Arizona is going to trade out of four. I think that they want to give Marvin Harrison Jr. to uh, Kyler Murray. But you never know if somebody offers just a crazy amount. The one that makes the most sense to trade, in my mind, is that Tennessee pick. What do we got? Bleak neighbors in, you know, you can make a case, especially after them spending so much money on Calvin Ridley, still having DeAndre Hopkins, you know, there's a lot to be said there of those different picks. Uh, we could always, let's see. Um, I need to look at something real fast. So now you get into does, you know, Atlanta already has a pretty good offensive line. They're probably now going to look to, take the first defender and probably whoever they mm-hmm. like Dallas Turner, whatever pass mm-hmm. rusher, they're like maybe a stud corner. Um, yeah, you could see, we could reach out to Tennessee or... now that they have Calvin Ridley and Malik neighbors and see if they'd give us DeAndre Hopkins. You never know. <laughs> yeah. Now, is so, there uh, any interest to you guys, depending on where Brian Thomas starts you know, trickling down the board. Is there a sweet spot that you guys feel within reason you'd be want to move up? Because obviously we've talked, Xavier Legat seems to be the name that is kind of rising up boards. Greg, I heard you, you know, you were talking about him yourself. Um, I, I think he's a guy that would fit a bunch of different needs, both on the boundary and inside. Um, but is, is there a sweet spot that you guys would be interested in potentially moving up that direction? I don't think there's anyone outside those top three. Like, I don't want to give up what it would take for Harrison Jr., Odunes, and Neighbors, but I can at least be, you know, compelled to look at, you know, would we consider a move up? Because they are, those are guys that you're not talking about. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, I'm not sure whether they're a wide receiver too wow. or whether they could eventually step up. So we had the Bengals trade up for Joe Alt. I do think that's a good spot for Joe Alt, but it's interesting that the Bengals moved up for him. That's a interesting yeah. deal. Um I I at least can understand that hey, if you get one of those three receivers and neighbors, neighbors, uh Harrison Jr. and Odunes, that you are at least locking up, hey, we have an elite. 1A, 1B situation now and are already prepared for the post Stefan Diggs era and that you're set up really, really well. So I, it's one of those things where I'd be like, oh my God, I can't believe we gave up that much. And then I'd probably get over it and, and would, would, you know, you know, it's not, it's never going to look good on a spreadsheet. It's never going to look good on paper. But when I go to training camp and watch, you know, that thoroughbred trot down the sideline, I'll be like, oh, hey, look, we got one of those guys. That's, that's fun. Um, <laughs> Once you get beyond there, I, I, I'll be completely honest, uh, a certain content creator that a lot of folks around Bill's Mafia have a lot of faith in that hosts a daily podcast that people listen to very regularly, um, 
he's got Xavier Leggett straight up ahead of Brian Thomas Jr. Like if both of them are on the board, he would pass on Brian Thomas Jr. and just take Xavier Leggett. Um, I don't think he's a, in the. I think he's in the same tier. I don't think Brian Thomas Jr. I'm fine with people ranking him fourth. I don't think that's crazy. I think more teams would rank Brian Thomas Jr. fourth than other receivers, but I also think it's probably like eight or ten teams, and that there's probably twenty teams that don't have him as wide receiver four. And I think there's probably five or six different receivers ranked as wide receiver four amongst all the 32 draft boards. Um, so I think he's probably the, what is that, the plurality? I, I think he's the most common of the guys that are there, but I don't think he's some like locked in. And I don't think he's, I think he's closer to the rest of the guys in that second tier than he is to those top three. So I like him. And if, if he's on the board, when it gets to us, I'll be super excited and I'll run right up to the to the podium. I don't think he's a guy that you trade up for because if you don't get him and it's AD Mitchell or you don't get him and it's Xavier Worthy or you don't get him and it's Xavier Leggett, I don't think you had any drop off or any loss. I think whichever of those size, speed, talented outside receivers that you give to Josh Allen is probably going to do better than the size speed receiver that you give to Derek Carr or Aiden O'Connell, even if one of them goes, you know, 14 or 16, and the other one goes 28, I'll take the one playing with Josh Allen. Um, so it's one of those spots where I, I, I don't think it's crazy. I get why some people talk about it. And I, there are probably some folks I'm perfect. Not probably. There are some sharp folks out there. I'm trying to, uh, is it Chris Sims who has Thomas jr. Ahead. Mm. I think Chris Sims might even have him ahead of Malik Neighbors, um, which so. is probably for attention. I don't know that that's real, but it's probably for attention. But whatever. He's a smart guy. There are other draft people who have Brian Thomas Jr. really high. I don't think he's separated himself from the rest of the group. I love the measurables. The combine was awesome. 17 touchdowns is awesome. I would be super excited to pick him. I I wouldn't be in a position that I'd want to trade up for him. Yeah, I think my sweet spot for you know, a guy like Mitchell um, is 30, <laughs> actually, you know, not not a trade up, but a trade back, try, try and recoup one of the, you know, that third round pick. I want to get more into day two, in all honesty, as, as right. much as much as possible, you know, because like Greg was talking about, like, I think I think those top three wide receivers are, you know, maybe tiers one and two by themselves. And then tier three is like 12 or 14 guys deep, depending on, you know, who you're talking to. Yeah. And you know, the beauty is in the eye of the beholder, but you know, th there's going to be, there's going to be value there on, on day two. So quick recap for the folks listening, obviously again, our, our top seven went all as expected, although I guess not as expected at the very top because Drake may went ahead of Caleb Williams, but God bless him. That's exciting. Uh, but it did go four quarterbacks, three receivers. So may Williams, Jaden uh, Daniels, JJ McCarthy, we had a trade up for that fourth pick with JJ McCarthy, then Marvin Harrison, Jr. Roma Dunes, Malik neighbors, whatever order those go. I think that top seven makes a lot of sense. I think Joe all makes sense is the next one. Uh, Dallas Turner, the jets took Brock Bowers. Um, so the, the bears getting those, I, I don't, I, I don't like the jets ever getting anyone good. And I do think Brock Bowers is good. So that's annoying. Um, this one is interesting. The the Cardinals taking Leatu Latu. Um, so that is a player that I won't be shocked if he goes, you know, eighth or ninth or 39th. You know, we don't know <laughs> what those medicals are gonna do. Yeah. And um oh darn it, who is the Michigan defensive tackle? Uh that... Mason Smith. No, no, no oh, sorry, no, sorry, uh, not this year. The guy who was supposed oh, to be a top oh, five pick yep. and then tumbled mm -hmm. because of the yeah, heart yeah, yeah. issues. Um, and he's still playing. Yeah, I think he played with the Browns last year. Maurice Hurst. Maurice Hurst. First, Maurice Hurst first. was a guy was six keyword. years ago um, that was going in. And like right around now, like a month before the draft, it came out that there was like a heart condition uh, found in his medicals. And then all of a sudden, it – you know, he, he went in like a fourth or fifth round pick where he ended up going. He was supposed to be like a top five pick or a top 10, you know, first half of the first round guy. And nobody could understand why is he still on the board? Why is he still on the board? Um, and, you know, different ones have, have happened for different reasons. Um, remember when Ruben Foster was supposed to be like a top 10 pick and then he tumbled uh, down there. Obviously, some off field issues that ended up proving pretty accurate <laughs> when when those things happen. There's unfortunately, there's way more of those tumbles 
that prove correct than there are the Randy Mosses and Warren Saps of the of history. We're like, oh my god, or Laramie Tunsil is another one that had no business falling as far as what he did. Um, so this year, Latu is that guy where if we start seeing if he falls to the Bills at 28 and the Bills pass, you can feel assured that, like, oh man he's red flagged on a ton of draft boards and you know, we just didn't get those medicals and the, I know there's, you know, UCLA has a top notch medical uh, facility. I believe the doctor who did Peyton Manning's spinal fusion surgery kind of did an evaluation signed off on it. He played multi, you know, two very healthy seasons at UCLA and uh, yeah, uh, Ron, uh, Ron here bringing up that uh, Tyler Smith from uh, the guard that Kansas City snagged, who ended up being like a sixth round pick for them or something crazy, was red flagged and, and fell. And you never know, like some of those end up being like, oh man, that was sad. Imagine what it could have been if not for X, Y, and Z. And then some of them end up, you know, Smith looks awesome and has been good. Maurice Hurst hasn't been, that ended up, I don't want to say accurate. Mm -hmm. um, he wasn't worth the top half of the first round pick. But he's also played six or seven years in the NFL without missing a lot of time. So obviously the heart issue hasn't been what people were concerned with. But in hindsight, he ended up not being quite as good as what people had thought at that time. Um, yeah. oh, the flip a, side of that story is Jalen Smith, right? the linebacker for the Cowboys. Yes, great, right? great example. Yeah. Great example. Um, I, I always think of like in the NBA with like Brandon Roy. Uh, when he was coming out yep. and he was supposed to be this sure thing, but like, Hey, we don't know if he has any cartilage in his knees. And then he was, he proved everyone, right. He was awesome in those first like three or four seasons. And then he couldn't play anymore. And like, so the, like the people who loved him were right. Cause he was awesome. And then the people who were worried about the long-term health were right. Cause he couldn't play anymore. And you never know when those things happen. It's just crazy, scary. Uh, as Roy was bringing up here, um, you know, if we can get Malik neighbors, a <laughs> gas mask or something like that, <laughs> gas mask. Gas that mask. would be awesome. I'll, I'll chip in to mail it to him. What would be uh, today's he, uh, he doesn't open gas doors mask. for old ladies. That's probably a dangerous conversation. Yeah. He doesn't take his cart back. <laughs> that, that kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah. We, we can start uh, vicious rumors of, yeah, yeah. I've, I've heard that he, he doesn't even like puppies. It's, it's crazy. He doesn't, he doesn't tell his dog big stretch in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, he tells all dogs, "You're not even that good of a boy." <laughs> he uh, he viciously supports fanatics jerseys. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I haven't seen. So I I forgot. I remembered all the like warm up things and how ridiculous it was. Have there been any like uh, faux pas? No, just last night, the, just last baseball? night, the Yankees. Just last night, yeah, the judge's Yankees jersey looked like he jumped pitcher. in a pool. Yeah, it it looked it like he might as well have been fire hosed. I mean, it was it was ridiculous how drenched and sticking that thing was on him. I mean, and it's April. I mean, sorry, it's March. You know, like it's cold. It's not even that <laughs> like, hot yet. It's yeah, not it's even, not even hot, hot yet. yet. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so a couple a quick update here. Uh, some stuff that we want to root for and one we didn't. So we've now seen an early rush on, rush on edge, which. I think probably we'll talk about as it gets closer. Maybe I'll ask after this. We want to see the run on tackle. So we've seen only Joe Walt mm -hmm. and uh, Fashanu from Penn State go so far. Uh, the first corner to go, we had Terry and Arnold uh, go here. We have our, our Mac friend coming up here pretty soon uh, that we should see. And again, I am, you know, Aaron and I talk about it on our show. I am not a draft person. I wait and then I cram and cheat off of all the other really smart people um, and go and, and find their work later on and learn about it. I'm not going to spend a ton of time on offensive tackles and cornerbacks and stuff. I'll, I'll find some mid round guys that I, I like, but I'm just not going to be that concerned with it. Um, I was going to say how many picks do the Cardinals have, but I forgot they traded down from uh, yeah. pick four. So yeah. this Cardinals guy's wheeling and dealing. He ended up with Latu and now he moved back up for somebody right here. You know, Mitchell is the other. Toledo guy here. Yeah, Quinn Hugo. I, I just got to say, in regards to your comment about Sammy Watkins and that trade, uh, that trade would have been good had the Bills actually had a quarterback and Sammy Watkins wasn't his own demon. So the trade in and of itself was not a bad idea, and it shouldn't detract, detract you from doing it again <laughs> because and, of the circumstance. And I'll use that in the same way that uh, Aaron uh, Aaron Maben has nothing to do with Chop Robinson. And right, yeah. last year, 
Mm -hmm. the when the you know a factor for the Panthers was well we've never seen a good quarterback from Ohio State before well guess what that shouldn't have stopped you from taking CJ Stroud because that sure would have worked out you you scout the player not the helmet so the situation before whether it's Sammy Watkins or another Clemson receiver whether it's trading up for a receiver because of Sammy Watkins whether it's Shop Robinson because you're afraid of Aaron Maben you 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 scout the player not the helmet you cannot let those things be a factor in, in what you do or else you're going to make way more bad decisions than good ones. I, I, you know, if anything, if you want to tell me that taking, you know, an Ohio state receiver makes you feel better because Brian Hartline just turns out a factory of receivers. Okay. Like I, maybe I'll give it a slight, you know, percentage bump that like, yeah, there has been some nice assurance there, but in general, you know, scout the player, not the helmet. Cause there are just as many busts from, Georgia and LSU and Ohio State and Michigan and good schools as there are from other schools. Like not everyone from those, you know, big Alabama football factories, not all of them work out either. You, you got to, you know, take some of that into account. You can't give it bonus points because of the helmet. You can't take away because of the helmet. Scout the player, not the helmet. Not to mention two Absolutely. different because organizations vice versa is entirely. Not true either, right? Yeah. Right, exactly. But I mean, it's also two different organizations. You got Sean McDermott yeah. and Brandon Bean at the helm instead of, the just atrocity oh, that yeah. was there when Sammy if Sammy yeah. was here now with Josh Allen and Sean That's McDermott right. I have a belief he probably would not have gone down the path he did well and you know if anything I, I've gotten into it with with plenty of people about um you know previous GMs and that you know why am I drawing a blank on the GM that traded up for Sammy uh Doug Whaley and Doug Buddy Nick or Buddy um, Nick so with yeah, like at that point, I, I think technically yeah, a, Whaley was the assistant GM and maybe Buddy was technically still the GM. But even with Doug Whaley, like Doug Whaley had a great eye for talent. He just, he go. was one of those talent over everything. He didn't care about the locker room fit. He didn't care about building a roster. He wasn't great at contract structure. Mm-hmm. But he had an eye for talent. Like he picked good mm-hmm. players. He just didn't build a team and he <laughs> in never, the way that was he never had a quarterback yeah. either in fairness like the guy was just efficient yeah so let's do another quick update here no. we're getting to a point now um so i actually thought uh i actually in here randy had mentioned a, a comp that i've used before that you know it, it's terrace marshall is a guy who was a big fast lsu receiver playing opposite another really talented receiver who they both caught 24 touchdowns while at LSU. Um, and both were like 9.9 9, uh R, you know, RAS guys. But that shouldn't stop you from drafting Brian Thomas Jr. It's just also a warning sign that hey, Brian Thomas Jr. shouldn't be some sure thing that you know is absolutely the guy. You you do have to take into account that hey, you know, we don't know how much he benefited from Malik neighbors. We don't know. It's a factor. It's, it's a piece. He should still absolutely be one of the options you look at, but you have to take those things into account. All right. So we have the back-to-back corners. Uh, we had three edges. It uh, went pretty quickly. Um, Terry and Arnold, Quinn and Mitchell both went, we got another pick coming in here. Mm-hmm. The Rams go, the Rams have a first round pick. It's so crazy. Ah, they take Johnny Newton. Okay. <laughs> Over. Uh, did they just take John over Byron over? Murphy? Oh, over yeah, Byron Murphy? Over Byron did they? Murphy. They did. Ooh, yeah, that's sassy. And Murphy's still on the board because I was like, well, okay. I might have to quit that uh, no trade up. <laughs> yeah, that Byron, yeah, I, Byron really Murphy's is. a stud. Yeah. Um. Hmm. So I'll ask you guys. Uh. And obviously, Byron Murphy's a stud. That that's absolutely a player that would be in range. I thought when Arizona was trading up here, the fact that they got their edge and they traded up, I assumed, oh, they missed out on the receiver at four. I thought they were going to take Brian Thomas Jr. at fifteen. When that Mm -hmm. when the Cardinals GM traded back up, Um, so now that we've seen those top three edge, have you guys had a chance? I'll start with you, Chris. Have you had a chance to look into much stuff on Chop Robinson, Um, or I I know there are other edges there besides him. You know, uh, you know, the Braswell Uh, from Alabama. Yeah, other other than not, I haven't looked at edge too much. I, I was too focused on defensive tackle throughout okay. you know like leading up to this point in time um and then we went of course and filled that position and you know it looks more likely that edge might come in the draft but other other than you know somebody like law who i'd seen clips from with eric yeah. and ant um i haven't i haven't looked at all at, at braswell um and uh oh i'm gonna lose his name 
in my head. Um, Both Robinson, but that Dallas have... Turner, yeah, uh, yeah, Robinson, yeah, Dallas Turner. Yeah. I don't think there's much chance he makes it to us. Yeah, we are yeah. getting our tackle run here that we need to push us talent mm-hmm. down. So, uh, Fatanu went, who is don't confuse Fashanu and Fatanu. Those are both separate defensive tackle or offensive tackles. Uh, so Fashanu is at Penn State. Fatanu is Washington. Now we just saw Marius Mims, who's like the largest human on earth. He's yeah, he's ginormous. like what seven foot one. That's crazy. His and wingspan Byron Murphy really is still is. there. Uh, wow, Brian Byron Murphy. Uh, He's probably not going to be there Murphy's anymore back. after the Dolphins. Yeah, correct. Yeah, that what a yeah. fortuitous fall that the Dolphins would be actually want to trade world. out right now. Oh, really? Oh, do they? Mm-hmm. That's interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. so but other than Chop Robinson that... being you know a little undersized, I, I don't know yeah. that much about him. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I you know he's a guy that I'm I'm doing some more work on trying to get a better feel for. I know Darius Robinson is kind of a tweener that can play multiple roles uh, and might be able to you know play some of the Shaq Lawson strong side edge, but also play three tech on passing downs and have some versatility there. Which the the kind of room we have right now, I don't hate that kind of uh, versatility as an eighth defensive lineman. Uh, I I, I kind of like that that ability there. I don't know that I wanted it pick 28. Um, I'd probably rather the whoever has the highest pass rush upside. And I know some people like Braswell. Some people have him as a first round guy. Uh, this Damion is the the name that you'll hear. Chop Robinson is the guy that yeah. everyone uh, will call him that. Uh, again, Byron Murphy's a stud. Like if he keeps falling, that one's going to put yeah. us in a tough spot. Yeah. Now D- Darius Robinson is a name that has had a lot of versatility. You know, both DT and end at end, you know, that would that would be a name. You know, that would fit a lot of different backup spaces on on that roster right now. And you know, if if, in, if they're looking for additional had, rotation yeah. capability, you know, Byron Murphy to the Dolphins, I would hate that. Uh, I, would, I would be legitimately annoyed yeah. if they stumbled into Byron Murphy on draft <laughs> night. Uh, they don't deserve good right. things. They just don't. They don't no. deserve good things. No, only bad things can happen to people. In Selfishly, I kind of hope he goes in front of us because I want us to be forced into a wide receiver like nobody has ever been forced <laughs> into a wide receiver. Yeah, if, uh, yeah, if all of us is Latu on the train. Or, this is on the train. <laughs> yeah, if, if Latu or uh, somehow Jared Verse or whoever, like somebody right. like awesome at another position falls. But if we're in mm-hmm. this position and the top three edge rushers go, the top two defensive linemen go, um, we're now in a spot where we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven picks still, six picks still. Uh, we're looking good for even a trade back at this point. Um, what do so you guys think about cornerback? An, Sorry. So yeah. this is an interesting spot where some of the depth of the wide receiver class is also the reason a lot of other GMs might wait because they they feel good about who they could get in the second round. Um, whereas we're at the tail end of that group. So I wouldn't hate starting the next run. Um, to your question, Chris, the I know Anthony Prohaska has has made a pretty strong mm-hmm. case that maybe corner should be a little bit more of a yeah. discussion. Eric I didn't start talking about it on the film room. To, yeah. I, I agree with it in the sense that it's should be more in play in that second, third, fourth range than what we think. Mm-hmm. I don't. I don't think it's genuinely in play at at the first round pick because not that our first round picks automatically need to come in and start. That's obviously not that simple. Um, but we're now in a phase from a roster building standpoint that we need guys who can contribute. Cooper yeah. DeGene going there, whether he's yeah. a corner or a safety. Um, yeah. We'll see how he's utilized he... uh, a guy there that could be. I don't think that a spot where we have Rasul Douglas, Christian Benford, Kair Elam, Taron Johnson, all in position that we would spend another first round pick. Maybe I guess if if one of those guys they had a a really highly graded player fell that we didn't understand, I, you know, I, I guess I could see it, but I I would be pretty surprised myself. Yeah, Tajin would have been the guy for me that I would have considered sure. there because he could have been an additional, you know piece at that at that need for safety and i basically want to see the amoeba backfield at this point yeah. like yeah. Ro- mm-hmm. Tehran rotating with beck rotating with rasul ro- like i want i want them all everywhere um, i i yeah. wouldn't even count dejean as 
a corner in my mind. I, I think that he can play corner, can play safety, can play nickel or star or overhang or whatever you want to call it. Um, I don't think we would take him at 28, but I wouldn't freak out. Like, I okay, that's a guy who can come in. I want to be able to tell myself a story that our first round pick has a path to start day one. And if we take a guy, let's say it is a Quinyan Mitchell, who is a really good player, I think, all right, so now we're going to bench Christian Benford or now we're going to wait late and move him to safety or now we're already planning for Rasul Douglas to leave when he's our cornerback one. Um, it's just one of those spots where, okay, I guess that's not the end of the world, but I, I'd like to see a little bit more here. Um, but a guy like DeGene, I could see the path where, hey, we can get him on the field right off the bat. Dude, this Cardinals guy's going crazy. <laughs> Although he did trade down again. Uh, so I would get, take my guess JPJ. Is, yeah. D- Detroit had to have moved up to make sure they got Jackson Powers Johnson. That's my guess. We'll see. Which I guess to Thomas's uh, credit, it would remove the temptation. <laughs> if you, if you right, take absolutely. him off the board, <laughs> if you take him off the board, then, you know, all of a sudden we don't have to worry about debating. Should we take Jackson Powers mm-hmm. Johnson? Thomas of the of the wide receivers that are left, who who would be your top choice from this? And right, at Thomas Jr. or Mitchell or Worthy McConkey. So I I am absolutely a Brian Thomas Jr. truther, but I what I will say is right. there's something about Xavier Legat that I just keep going back to lately, and it's like I don't know, maybe I just didn't spend enough time on it, but watching him. In the way he plays, like somebody, somebody compared him to Eric Molds, and I mean, oh. golly, if that is in fact the case, you know, uh, both Southern schools. Obviously, Eric Molds went to Mississippi, but uh, I don't, I don't know, man. Z- the other thing is about Xavier Legat, which I think is very interesting. And if you want to watch my show this Thursday, I'm having a guy on that actually covers uh, <laughs> Xavier Legat in USC, but. Um, he comes from a pretty incredible background. Like his story and his right, the way he got to where he's at. Man. Oh, Detroit there it is. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. Um, but it, he has such a great story uh, that I don't know, man. I, I feel like he's endearing. Uh the other thing that I found very intriguing is on Josh Allen's uh his little interview with um with uh why am I forgetting their names? A quarterback coach and his backup last year, uh, Kyle Allen and Jordan okay. Palmer. Okay. Uh, Josh specifically mentioned the accent that Xavier Leggett has, so he's obviously somehow been watching Xavier Leggett. Oh, so yeah. interviews like, it's at least a, a mm. next level mm. familiarity than just right. being aware of the name. Right. So there's something there. I but it, long so that was very long winded. Uh, I, I think Xavier Leggett really has a piece. The one thing though, man, that I keep coming back to is they keep talking about speed, and they kept talking about speed. And would it just be so weird for the Bills the one time to get the like, Greg? I think you even mentioned it to get the fastest dude in the draft. Like, mm-hmm. just get a guy mm-hmm. that is just so game-breaking. I mean, they watch Tyreek Hill. Mm-hmm. And the one thing about Brandon Bean is Brandon Bean is a creature of – he's like a chameleon. You know, after we watched a defensive end beat the Chiefs, what did he do? Got Von Miller. You know, he kind of does what works best. So would he get a Tyreek Hill-esque type speed player? Maybe. Uh, so I, yeah. I think the people who are concerned with, hey – why did it take until the fifth year of Xavier Leggett to break out is a fair question. Like that's not a, there's a lot of statistical models that show you, Hey, that's a red flag. Now, if you listen to people who are familiar with his background, his story, his path, the injuries, the scenarios that came up, there is an explanation. So it's not one of those things where like, Hey, you know, this is a huge red flag here, but you know, are we concerned about it? There should be some concern. But there is an explanation. There is information available to make an informed decision um, that, you know, yes, it did. He did break out in his fifth year. However, there is a reason you transition from quarterback, some early injuries, some terrible quarterback play, 
while at uh, South Carolina during the COVID season, like all kinds of crazy stuff that kind of threw him off. He was a contributor on special teams. Uh, the new kickoff rules, I, I wouldn't hate putting Xavier Leggett at, you know, mm-hmm. 6'1", 225, running a four three nine. Give him a head of steam on that new kickoff rule. I'll, I'll take a shot at that. Um, all right, we've seen – we did see Detroit trade up for Brian Thomas Jr. J.C. Latham, another of the offensive tackles, went – I know I saw earlier Hugo and a couple other people asked, for anyone curious, this is a two-round mock here tonight. We're not going to do this for six straight hours. Um, <laughs> it's moving along very quickly. We're, we're making good pace right now. I think we're at like – not even a minute and a half a pick overall. So we're moving along. I think we'll be under two hours by the time this is done. Um, but it is two two rounds tonight, so we'll go through. Uh, as we're getting closer, there's three picks here. Do we want to float it out there that that we'd be willing to move back? Do we uh, – Jackson Powers Johnson is still there. Mm-hmm. Only one of the receivers have gone. Now A.D. Mitchell is gone. So yeah. this Mitchell, this run here where we've now seen two of the receivers go – this would probably stop me from wanting to trade back because I don't want to now just tempt fate and be like, well, we can still get somebody where if we move back a couple and four or five more receivers go and all of a sudden you are dropping down to another tier, I wouldn't be comfortable with that. So I, of course, would still consider Jackson Powers Johnson. I think he is 100% worth a first-round pick. I think he would be worth it there. I don't like Chop Robinson enough or know enough about him right now to make a case over him, any of the other guys here, I'm not going to make that case. I know some people have wondered, could Graham Barton play inside and, and play him at a spot there? I I would simply take Jackson Powers Johnson. Um, I would be one, you know, right now it'd be one of the Xaviers for me, uh, Leggett, or, <laughs> you know, do we give the fastest player in combine history to Josh Allen and say, here, I dare you to try to outthrow, to overthrow this human? Um, you know, we'll, we'll see as it gets closer here, but it'd be one of those three for me right now. One of the Xavier's or JPJ. The Bucks are also interested in trading down. So if Brandon Bean, who is notoriously um, antsy, does he jump the Colts who only have one true wide receiver to worry uh, about potentially losing out on somebody? They gave That'd probably be a fourth field. to get up those two spots. Yeah, right. it would we probably always trade a fourth. A fourth later, and that's he that is that's Brandon fourth. Bean's cost cost analysis. Anything in a fourth? Um, I would. I think with them, is it even worth it to you guys? To Elk Pierce, I don't think there's somebody like I. I like. I think there's Xavier enough Leggett talent on the board. A lot, but yeah, like if they took if they took Leggett. And we ended up with Xavier Worthy or Lad McConkey. I'd be like, oh man, okay. <laughs> and then we'd move along and I'd take whoever was there. Let's see. Bucks. Jax, there we go. Um, That's so, good for them. Very talented player. They just, they they just lost um, Ryan Jensen, uh, Jensen, their longtime yeah. center. Yeah. Tristan Wirfs and having a guy put that in the middle. That's awesome for Baker Mayfield. Um, so yeah, right now, I. I would just be, I'm going to take the receiver named Xavier that they don't pick. <laughs> this is probably where <laughs> where I would lean right now. I, is it worth I, it to even look at edge at this point? I don't even um, know. So I will say come draft time, I think there's a case. Chop Robinson, I think, is a legit pass rusher and a guy who is the, like that 6'3", 250, like that kind of player that is the like edge rusher bending the edge kind of player that we could be interested in. I I haven't done enough work on him to feel comfortable to make the case over a receiver, but I do think him and Jackson Powers Johnson are the kind of guys who could make a compelling case for that. Uh Sabre worthy. So Sabre's there worthy. we go. Uh, the the choice is basically made for us here. Um I think this kind of run, again, we're, we'll keep an eye on the clock so I don't uh, filibuster uh, ourselves here. You know, we were in a spot where coming up to 20, we felt really good. And then we saw a run here, honestly, with like six of the seven picks all in our range here. Byron Murphy went, Cooper DeGene, Brian Thomas Jr. We wouldn't really be in the market for a tackle, but one of them went, J- uh, J.C. Latham, A.D. Mitchell, Jackson Powers Johnson, Xavier Worthy. And I think that kind of run – is the reason that we shouldn't trade down. And I would love to play, you know, bingo here, bouncing around the board and, and recoup a third round pick. But seeing that run of talent go right before us, 
I, I just don't think that's worth the risk. Anybody feel strongly the other direction? No, I, I think you're you're in the right state of mind, to be honest with you. And like I said on my show the other day, when you start getting too cute, that's when you run into issues. And I think that the Bills don't want to run. If you like somebody, and I, I've said, if, if even if they are outside the realm of too much, like if maybe instead of, you know, you're a pick 28 and they're ranked 40, there's sometimes I just say Someone, take it without the risk. We did get an offer of a fourth and a fifth to drop down nine spots, which I, I don't yeah. think is crazy. Mm-hmm. And and honestly, like just it's not a third. Yeah. There's a chance that we could drop down there and still get Xavier Leggett. But it's one of those things mm-hmm. where if we all of a sudden see those picks go, I just wouldn't forgive myself. And um I'm gonna go ahead and lock it in. Uh I like it. I do think there's a possibility that you could make that kind of move and trade down and and gamble it in being able to do that and, and be in a position where you might still be able to maybe still get Leggett. Like, I, I don't think that's out of the question, but with seeing three receivers go right, bam, 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 right before us, if the wrong combination in the next couple picks, all it would take is we trade down nine spots. If Lad McConkey, Keon Coleman, Troy Frank, Franklin, and Xavier Leggett are four of those five picks, then all of a sudden you're furious and like, oh man, we just traded down and just aren't in a position to do that. So now it opens everything up. We can now look at, you know, if one of the stud uh, edge rushers fall, if we have a defensive tackle that's there, if we have a safety, you know, now you're in a position where we can watch Tyler Newbin or Cam Kitchens and, and see if one of those guys are available. It just opens a lot of things up where we don't have to feel locked in. Um, I do think it kind of drops a little bit after Jackson Powers Johnson. Like, I don't know if there's mm-hmm. immediately another interior lineman. I know, I've seen some some Christian Haynes clips that were very interesting. I know some people like Cooper Beebe. I, I'll be fine with it, but I, honestly, I'm also fine with, hey, which traitsy guy in the fourth round did Aaron Cromer tell Brandon Bean that he likes? It, I'll take that guy too. It's fine. Would you go ahead and look at who the wide receivers are left at this point? Um, I'm just curious, so, like scroll yeah. scrolling down, like so Lad, towards Lad the McConkey 60s, just, just to see because right after us. Uh, so yeah. Lad McConkey just yeah. went. You know, obviously Keon Coleman, Troy Franklin, yeah. Roman Wilson, Ricky Pearsall, Purcell, Jalen Pope, Polk, Corley, Malachi Corley, Baker, Devontae, Devontae Walker. It's an awesome class. But yeah. Brenda, Jermaine Burton. Yeah. Javon Baker way, way down there. There are guys that I, I feel really good about. Malik Washington is a guy that people really, really like. Somebody tried to make the and case thrash that, too. Yeah, that you know Malik Washington could be Steve Smith. You know, there's a lot yeah. of fun in, in what's out there, and that's all the more reason that if if we end up with a Jackson Powers Johnson or a Byron Murphy or a Cooper DeGene or someone like that, it mm-hmm. doesn't mean that we've now missed at wide receiver and that we can't add someone. Right. Very capable because heck, Jalen Polk is not that far down the list for me of guys that I think are there. He never drops anything. Um, I, I think there's a lot of you know potential for for what's out there. Um, yeah, this didn't seem to work out for trading back for us either at that point, or for taking a, a non wide receiver at this point. You know, so kind of some of the way that ran didn't really work the way I'd hope to see for a trade down or to wait on wide receiver. So yeah. I think yeah, I think yeah. that worked out well, you know, because Leggett has that Leggett has that upside that of just being an absolute beast, right? You know, like so, and we don't we don't need him to be outstanding right this minute. You know, we, we have Stefan Diggs, and despite what you think of Stefan Diggs second half of his season, there is still a hell of a lot of receiver left in that man's tank. And yeah. you know, that means Leggett has time to develop too. It, the next time that Stefan Diggs doesn't have a hundred catches for eleven hundred and fifty yards and eight touchdowns for the Bills will be the first yeah. time that he doesn't have a hundred catches for eleven hundred and fifty yeah. yards and eight touchdowns because that's what he does every single season. Yeah. And, and Kincaid's going to be option two, and Cook's going to be option three, and Curtis Samuel is option four. You know, like there's and, there's and no Shakir is option this five. First round wide receiver Holy is. Yeah. Chargers! Yeah, 
Chargers getting Whoa. Keon Coleman okay, and Chargers. Marvin Harrison Jr. <laughs> there you go. Well, when you lose right. Mike Williams and, and Keenan Allen, and you got Keenan Allen. The, yeah. That is restocking. Uh, Either one of those is Blake Corum. I'm concerned about the legitimacy of this effort. So. It's also uh it's also a real shame that uh one, two, three, four. That's a record. That seven receivers went all right before the Chiefs got to pick. That's a shame. That's a that's a dirty, it. dirty shame. I hate to see it. I will um, not miss not having to envision Xavier Worthy catching passes from Mahomes tonight. I don't. Yeah. I don't. I don't need that. I don't need that in real life. I don't need that in my dreams. No, neither. Neither. Um. So if we were to like build a recipe here where a trade down does work, I do think some things we didn't see early on. We did not see the second wave quarterback run. So nobody mm-hmm. wanted to move up for a Bo Nix or a Michael Penix Jr. That's a real life GM thing more than a Twitter GM thing. That's a thing that in real life I could see happening. I could see Bo Nix mm-hmm. and Michael yep. both mm-hmm. going late in the first round and people wanting that fifth year option. Yep. I could absolutely see that. Yep. Um, I do think Tyler Guyton, Graham Barton are guys that we could see go in the first round. I, I think those are both picks mm-hmm. that we could see and be able to push some things down. Um, I do think Kool-Aid McKinstry is absolutely a player that could go ahead of the Bills. Chop Robinson is another guy. So I, I see four, six players that I could see impacting that. If we saw three yeah. of those, for this example, um, go where you're in a spot where maybe it's not Brian Thomas Jr. Maybe he's a guy you would just pick. I, I don't know. But if none of the receivers had gone and you were in a position where all the receivers are on the board, that almost makes it easier for me to move down because then there's less risk of, even if there is a run where four or five of them go, there's still one of them left. Whereas the scenario that we were in here where three had gone, we were taking the fourth one and then two more went right after. So all of a sudden six went right in a row that's the scenario where, hey, I don't want to risk this here. I don't want to run the risk. But if if all of a sudden everybody was on the board at 28, that trade down nine spots, uh, and again, maybe we haggle, maybe I get a third out of it instead of a fourth and a fifth, whatever it is, but a slight trade down into this range right around here where there's, you know, a, you're moving down a little bit, but you're still staying within range where it can't, you know, lose you too much. I think all of a sudden that becomes a little bit more interesting. Yeah, right. It just seems like um, such a mistake for the Chargers to reach for a second wide receiver when they need a right tackle and a cornerback, yeah. like with McKistry and Barton and guys. That's very much a, I don't know. It's a fun. That's a, a Twitter fun mock draft yeah. thing. Yeah. That's a Twitter GM. He's going to get praised on Twitter. Would good for him. In real life, I guarantee that uh Jim Harbaugh takes the offensive tackle. Tyler Guyton would yeah. absolutely be the new uh yeah. right right tackle for Justin Herbert and, and would be in great shape. I, I and if they walked away with Marvin Harrison Jr. and Tyler Guyton, you know, how oh, you, there wouldn't be anybody on earth happier than yeah. Justin Herbert. Yep. How are we Still feeling me. into that second that second round pick? Are we where are we at now in terms of desires because we we still have tyler newbin uh very very yeah you know talented mm-hmm. safety out there i feel very good about now being able to let it come to us at 60 when we take the other position at 28 that's when i get more antsy about needing to move up from 60 to get a wide receiver because i do think we'll see a run before it gets to the bills at 60 um and too many will go the chief oh. taking devondre sweat Big okay. monstrous human. Uh, I don't love that putting him next to Chris Jones, but I'll take it. There's scarier things that I can think of than even a monstrous one tech. One tech. He's still a one tech. I'll I'll live with that. Um. Yeah, I think it puts us in a position where I feel really good, and I I checked off here: interior offensive line, D tackle, edge, safety, corner. Any of those, mm-hmm. I could see one of these guys making it to us and and feeling pretty good about it. Uh, mm-hmm. Braden Fiske is a guy that I think would be uh, a great fit in being able to do there. Yep. If, if Chris Braswell, um, you know, again, I don't expect Darius Robinson to make it. Tyler Newbin, um, there's a mm-hmm. lot of guys here that I, I could see a case for Chris Jenkins, Braylon Trice. Like there, there, there's good players here. Um, I really want us to draft 
Rookie Aroraro just to watch people have to say <laughs> Rookie to say his name. like over and over and over yeah, again. That I've, there are people that I know and love hmm. that I can't wait to watch them have to say Rookie Aroraro. <laughs> I can't imagine you wanting to do that to Aaron. That just seems unfair. It's going to be so fun. It's going to be great. <laughs> That's the uh, oh. Scooby Doo theory. Like all the all the Scooby Doo memes would be unbearable. <laughs> That's awesome. Just, <laughs> just listen to uh, Steve Tasker try to pronounce that. Oh, oh no. <laughs> it would be awesome. It would be so oh, no. fantastic. <laughs> the first pick of the second round. We have another receiver, Troy Franklin, who is actually who I was nervous. That's who Kansas City was going to take was Troy Franklin. Mm. Um but that you know it shows John you that Hall wide receiver run right at the end. Yeah, John, John loves him. Loves so him. the Colts here's an interesting one. The Colts are interested in moving back from 215. So 215 are we are we interested in maybe throwing an offer from 228 mm. to 215? Um so let's look. It would be cost value you're looking at let's see. Probably our second fourth rounder, or, or maybe a fifth rounder. Yeah, it, you're looking at it's about 140 points. So we uh, without a third rounder, you're talking getting a little creative, potentially maybe a 2025 pick, or kind of you know buttoning a couple maybe a couple fourths together. Having to yeah, but, something. yeah, you're gonna have to you have to get a little creative mm-hmm. without having that third rounder there. Um, I, I, I don't know that I see anyone so obvious that, Hey, we have, we, we for sure have to do this updated, uh, you know, version of it and, and to go in there and let's see that point model. Yeah. So even looking at like the adapted one, the rich Hill version, he wants 40 points, which yeah, it's still about the same. It's so more than our fourth rounder. And I, I don't know that I'd want to get creative and have to come up with something different to move up there. Again, if it was, if we flipped mm-hmm. it around and say we took Jackson Powers Johnson or we took Chop Robinson or we took some other position there at 28 and we were now needing a receiver and worried about this run that we just saw happen. And um, there goes Tyler Guyton. Um, and that we were sitting there going, oh man, we, we can't let it go any further. We need to go get Roman Wilson, or maybe we were trying to move up for Troy Franklin, who who was just there. Then I'd get a little more desperate, and I'd be willing to do, hey, do we need to move our 2025 second rounder to be able to move up and be able to jump way up here and get one of these receivers before they go? Mm -hmm. Um, But again, instead of getting cute and moving down, because I guess uh, this is a good time to look at it, the pick we were offered is the next pick. And if we had traded down there, look at the best receivers left. We would have just traded down and watched uh, Leggett, McConkey, Coleman, Franklin all go. And we would now – I like Roman Wilson. I like Ricky Pearsall. I like Jalen Polk. But all of a sudden, we would be like, oh, man, we would feel stupid that we didn't take a guy who has a chance to come in and be a long-term uh, wide, a potential wide receiver one rather than – these guys are all going to be really nice contributors. Like I think there's a chance those guys – make a really good contribution to NFL uh, receiving rooms, but taking a guy that has a chance to be that number one outside guy, I think is, is really intriguing. Yeah. yeah it really, I mean, we really need to see a run at the ahead of us for cornerback tackle, um, get a couple other of those quarterbacks yeah. in there to, to make trading back worthwhile for us. And, and that didn't happen here. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. If we see guys move up for those two quarterbacks, uh, m- more offensive tackles go. We saw Guyton go after us. Barton's still on the board. If those two both go, um, Darius Robinson is a guy who could go ahead. If we see more of those moves happen again, but more of the corners go, all those things could put us into a better position to where maybe then we could get cute and, and maybe move down a little bit and feel better about it. Because, again, the, the whole point is we need to be able to move down in a way that we we can't – get caught you know with our pants down here where oh we get too cute we move down and we thought we were only moving down 10 spots but five of the guys we wanted in that run went and now we don't have it left um so andy here in the chat is asking would uh love if chop was still there he actually went the next pick after us chop robinson went um to san francisco the next pick after us there is a there's two edge rushers named robinson um so this one here uh damian 
Robinson is the guy that goes by chop uh, for Penn State. The guy for Missouri is the one I was kind of talking about. He's a, mm-hmm. you know, he's a mix of I'm trying to think a good comparison of maybe a, a recent bill. Maybe I guess maybe prime Shaq Robin uh, Shaq Lawson, like when Shaq was mm-hmm. coming out as, as a first rounder, where maybe he shouldn't have been a first rounder. And, and, you know, it's easy to. to I was even him. thinking a little Mario Addison too. Yeah, yeah, a guy who hey, he's a big, strong edge, can play strong side edge against the run, is going to be really good there. Can compress the pocket, can also kick inside and pass rush from the three tech. Can compress the pocket and pass rush from the outside. He's not going to bend the corner and beat a guy. You know, six five two ninety six. He's a big dude, yeah. um, but is not. You know, he's not a defense tackle. Not just a defensive end. He's a guy who, who is. I guess he's also from Missouri. He's a better version of Boogie Basham. Like he's maybe what Boogie Basham was supposed to be. Um, We're not clipping so he's that. A guy subject. that I'd be. Yeah, I'd be interested in, but uh, not like going crazy about if he made it to pick 60 absolutely um i i would be on board with that do you guys do you guys feel like the bills have changed their archetype at edge you know it had been addison it had been you know jerry it had been um trent oh, murphy. shack um shack trent murphy and now we're seeing more you know miller cracked that cracked that door yeah. open because of being a hall of fame talent but do you feel like that was kind of the door that's like oh okay now leonard floyd um yeah. you know okay now maybe maybe a guy like law too like that that seems to have changed what they're thinking is possible now from from edge body types it certainly has it's more than a possibility it's it's almost been the trend it's almost been more so than the bigger stronger guys although gregory russo is just is still a monstrous guy he's still a big huge right. strong mm-hmm. guy um you know, Casey Tuhill's not an archetype kind of player. He's a hustle guy, but he also got a minimum contract. So I don't know that he is a big indicator either way. I think they've certainly shown more flexibility and more willingness. So um, any of the guys here, and, and again, Chop Robinson being the guy we were talking about earlier, a guy who's 6'3", 250, I absolutely think that's in play. I don't – like before, mm. we might have said, oh, they don't really do that type. But our last two biggest signings at – defensive end we're both 245 pounds so obviously they yeah, are open exactly. to it and we spend a whole lot of money on leonard floyd and von miller and there goes darius yeah. robinson darius robinson did go while yeah. we were talking there so yeah i thought this was an interesting question from astro um where do you think rousseau would fall in amongst this year's group of edge rushers so I'd, I'd definitely remember. have him ahead of chop uh, but, but yeah you know it, it's an interesting conversation to think about where would you know he was late first round when the bills took him and you know, where, where do we think he might fall here i think he'd be fourth i think he'd be after that top group of turner latu and verse i think he'd be the top of that next tier because mm-hmm. we still got to remember he also had some really freaky traits you're talking about a guy who's you know six seven and has crazy wingspan and size and that is translated in in the league here so there was some unknown with him because of the weird covid season and and the different timing of things but you're still talking about a really freaky overall athlete that i think would be very intriguing they obviously value those crazy um freaky traits I'm I'm really glad that a guy like him is not in this draft because uh (laughs) he absolutely would fall right to where the bills are because of just like greg said having you know because of his mom being in the medical profession and him taking a year off to help her out um he would fall right into the bills range and he is the type of guy that fits everything that they would want especially now with the with the needed defensive end absolutely 100 percent. it's it's the exact kind of guy uh so pops here asking where would shakir fit in so it's it's unfair because we have the the grace of hindsight in seeing Khalil Shakir. Khalil Shakir was a fifth round pick in a lesser wide receiver group. So in the draft, he'd be a fifth round pick again. Like I, I can't imagine he'd go higher in a better wide receiver group because there's more competition. If if anything, he'd be right there where we would have expected him to go in that fifth round group again. With what we've seen and what we know of him. Does that, you know, yeah, of course, maybe he'd be higher and in, in you could probably make the case that he should be with the Roman Wilsons and the 
um, Ricky Pearsall's and the um, maybe Corley, maybe Brendan Rice. Like you could probably make Javon Baker. You can make a case. Maybe he should be in that group um, of second tier guys. But in his draft, he wasn't. He was drafted in the fifth round and this is a better wide receiver group. So as a prospect, he would be I, I maybe Jamari Thrash, like that kind of guy in this class is where you're hearing it. Or Taj Washington, he was a little bit bigger than Washington. Um, so he'd be down in this range. You, good, to, Honestly, a uh, really good comp would probably be someone like Bub Means, where you're hearing a lot of kind of fun buzz about him as a fun day three guy. That's what Khalil Shakir was going into that draft. I liked him. I was super excited when we got him in the fifth, but I didn't expect this. To, I didn't expect it to be – where he where he was at that time um and i know uh here at nfl draft fanatics our, our, our guy you know sharing that he had a third round grade the year coming out many people did but none of the gms did because no no gm took him in the third round so obviously not that many people had him as a third round grade because he went in the fifth so um you know i i love the pick on draft day i feel better about it now but it's hard to know in hindsight would he have gone any earlier it's, it's, yeah. it's tough to know. that's a nice pick in this yeah. one michael Penix Jr. Pick. yeah the giants mm-hmm. not having to trade up having the they're locked in to daniel jones and having to to you know let Penix jr kind of get himself ready mm-hmm. um i think there's a chance of oh, bonix right back to back the the two mm-hmm. yeah. two quarterbacks go um and that's you know right around that Will Levis range that we saw last year, where mm-hmm. a lot of people thought he'd be a late first and ended up going kind of early in the second. So Penix Jr. and Bo Nix both going, but lasting a little bit longer than people expected. We still got a little ways to go in terms of uh, where we're at right now. Does if Tyler Newbin starts to slip close to us, do you care on waiting, or, or is there not enough desire um, for you to want to go after him? So let's build ourselves a queue. So Nubin, Bisk. Mm-hmm. Where, where I got. I apologize. I should. Our friends over here at Walk the Mock. I should know what I'm doing more than I do. Where did I just put those? Like where? Okay, here's Q. Here's the draft Q. Yep. Let's do this. Okay. So Braswell. Braswell. Um, yeah. Chris Jang. I, I'll play with the order here in a minute. Coop, uh, Cooper BB. Twice. Who did you say? Yeah, could be. Cooper, oh, yeah. Maybe, yeah. Do some of the interior offensive linemen. Yeah. Even BB even Christian Haynes. Christian Haynes as well. I think yeah, he would be yeah. a really nice fit. Both of them. I'm gonna put Rook. Rook Scooby Doo is right there. A row, 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 row. <laughs> and I'm putting Dwayne Carter just because. Yes. Uh, yeah. The case that was was made from uh, our. He's why I won a third round pick right, yeah, primarily. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Honestly, I um, would even. I would even say TJ Tampa, to be honest with you, I think is a guy that probably, if he was to fall close to them, would be in their radar. Kitchens. Yeah, Bullard. and the ant is Bullard. high on Kitchens. Mm. Yeah. That's safety. Mm-hmm. Well, Ken- Kitchens is also a guy that played under our new defensive backs coach. Yeah. So, yeah, good. Yeah, good, pull. good pull. Definitely some correlation. I like Kitchens. Thomas, I've asked I've asked Greg this earlier, but where do you are you convinced that McGovern is the center, or is that um, wait and see what happens in the draft? Oh gosh! So the one the one thing I keep kind of just like circling in my mind is is Ryan Bates, right? And the reason I say that is they they did at all costs try to keep Ryan Bates off the field because having that sixth lineman was so beneficial to them. And David Edwards presents that to them. So I wonder if if they can find somebody that they can slot in at center, put McGovern back to where he was at left guard, does that allow them to have Edwards as that off-the-bench six jumbo package lineman? Yeah. I mean, I guess, I, I guess I don't another know. option, it too, is if they... Yeah, I guess another option too is is if they if they do like McGovern at center, then is Edwards still really that guard? You know, um, so right. That, that's know, also true. Yeah. And then you look at a Christian Haynes. Absolutely. Yeah. So, I, the way that we built this queue here, I I think the top three are guys where 
I don't know that any one of them is one that like, oh, we have to go get that one. But Chris Braswell, Tyler Newbin, and Braden Fisk are all guys that I don't think are out of question at pick 28. I think there's a possibility if mm-hmm. the board fell wrong, any of those three could be a guy that we could pick at pick 28 and be like, all right, okay. I mean, that's the spot we needed, and it's a talented player, and I can get my head around that. So if we go a bit further here and we get to where two of those three guys go, then you get to where like, okay, maybe a small trade up. We're also far enough down now where, again, in, okay, in five, six more picks, if we get to a point where one of those three is left, I'd be like, eh, maybe I'll give up that second, fourth rounder to go up and get another one of these guys. So really it's now the waiting game of, okay, how many of these can we wait for? DJ Tampa, okay. A guy who was on our queue but not at the top. Um, yeah. So I feel like... If if can Caswell can is there, that there? would be really hard to to ignore. I mean, and he he doesn't have everything you want in an edge. Obviously, he's still lasting around. But when you lead the SEC in sacks, there there's potential there. And I I think that would be hard to turn down with with Miller's age and you know Epinesa being solid. But is his is his top level a, a an edge one? kind of level you know is his is his a game what we want to to be our top (laughs) yeah yeah arizona's like gonna break the record for draft day trades this guy is working the board (laughs) good for him Um, can can i fun yeah can i say that if ricky pearsall really ends up in baltimore i will be so sick to my stomach (laughs) i do i love ricky I think he's yeah, going to be a really good okay. pro. There we go. Is your Cooper linebackers? Is that first linebacker? Offensive tackles. That's the first linebacker. That's uh, he is such a Browns. That is like if you could yeah. make a Browns linebacker, a drink Cooper is perfect. San Russell. Okay, he's the guy who's got some Taron Johnson. He's like, uh, like uh, bougie Taron Johnson. <laughs> he, he, he's like the like shined up Taron Johnson. He's gonna yeah. he's gonna be good in this league. I know it. Like yeah. Mike Sanders is going to play a long, long time in this league. All right, so we are now in a spot where I feel really good because we have 15 guys in our queue and we are 11 so picks bro- away. Yeah, and <laughs> our top three are all still there. So we're now getting into a really good spot where. You know, if we get a couple more here, we got that second Eagles pick. We know our guy with the Cardinals is always down to trade. Um, (laughs) He actually hasn't picked anybody yet. He's just trading every pick. (laughs) Yeah, just trade you. With the stand stand right now, which do you guys think is a bigger need? Um, Do you guys think safety or edge is a bigger need right now? Like with with the roster as it is today? Safety. For me, it's safety. safety. You know, just because... I mean, you're asking who do I think is ready to contribute more, Taylor Rapp and Mike Edwards or Von Miller, Gregory Rousseau, and A.J. Epinesa. I I just feel like that edge group is not perfect, but they're more ready to contribute. And honestly, I think David Edwards, I I actually think guard is a higher need than edge, but edge is also a premium position and blah, blah, blah. Like there's, Mm -hmm. we might be able to pick a guy in the fourth round that ends up starting at guard because that happens all the time in the nfl um but we're getting into a spot here where maybe it is our friend with the cardinals just because he's never seen a trade he didn't like uh (laughs) yeah i think i think it's a a question between 2024 and long term too you know because von miller's going to show us what he has left uh this year you know, like yeah. the, we're we're past that, you know, 18 month point for recovery from the ACL. And I, th- I think now we get to see, OK, really, really, what does Miller have left available to offer? Yeah. And that's a that's a pretty big influence on, you know, edge for for 2025 and beyond. So one, just double checking, I think RJ figured it out, but other people might be asking. This is only a two round exercise, so we are coming up on our our pick, and then it'll wrap it up. Um, Pops here asks a good question: How far is the drop at edge versus safety? I will tell you, I haven't done enough work to know for sure, but I feel a lot more comfortable mm-hmm. here at safety, where um, 
you're talking about a guy. Malik Mustafa is super interesting. Bo mm-hmm. Braid is is interesting. James Williams is interesting. Sean Vaki, Tyke Smith, Dadrian Taylor, uh, Demerson. There are a lot of guys. Uh, some people have Bernardo Green as a corner. Some as a safety. Jalen Cole Simpson. Bishop. Like there's a ton of guys in that Rocky. third, fourth, fifth round range that I'm yep. really interested in at safety. Mm-hmm. And I, I would like it if we got our choice of the first safety off the board and it's Tyler Newbin or, or it's Cam Kitchens or whoever it might be. But mm-hmm. I like a lot of these guys, and I think there's a good chance to get a contributor at safety pretty quickly um, who can come in and compete and be able to go and, and make a case to get some snaps early on or at minimum – we now have a one-year deal with Mike Edwards. Like that gives us a chance for a guy to step in later and play some special teams right off the bat. So I I think that when I'm doing these exercises, when you get past these four, honestly, Chris Braswell, Braylon Trice, uh, Marshawn Neeland, and Adisa Isaac, right. it gets real rough. Muhammad Kamara mm-hmm. is the one that I've heard. Heck, I, I think – I think Mel Kuyper put him in a first round mock. I think just just to prove the point of like, yeah, hey, he's a guy that should be way higher than you guys say. And he, he said that on his um, podcast with uh, Field Yates and those guys that like, hey, maybe it really is just the early second, but I think he should be way higher on people's boards. And I'm here in the NFL likes him more than draft Twitter does. Uh, so Muhammad Kamara is a name to make sure you keep an eye on uh, is, a, is a guy that's out there. And they actually used – uh, I believe uh, Cooper Beebe, so a guy that was on our board, just went. Um, the Colorado State, I believe that Hassan Reddick was in the same path, and they he they used him as the comparison, 6'1", 250, uh, and just gets after the quarterback. So he's one of the later guys here, but there are not a lot of other um, later edge rushers in this class. So I think the drop-off is much larger at edge than it is at safety. Yeah, and where does this? They've got Braswell at at forty eight. I'm not. I can't I, remember I right now where they have Newbin at. But you know, like, um, in terms of 42. the the drop off from what they have available. Oh, at forty. Wow. Okay. I, I probably wouldn't have had Newbin that high, but um, the drop off from where I would have Braswell ranked two versus where I would have like Newbin ranked later. Like that drop off is significantly greater in edge yeah. than it is in safety. You know, like you were just talking yeah, about, the, and there's a lot more options with safety. Like, you know, um, you know, a guy like Jalen Simpson is a guy that Ant and I have been talking about. Um, and, you know, pretty, pretty much the only drawbacks on him are like, he needs to bulk up a little, <laughs> you know, like, like that kind of stuff. And it, so, yeah, I, I think there's a lot more options at, at safety than there are, you know, depth in this edge class. You guys will be shocked. The Cardinals guy traded them. <laughs> Absolutely shocked. So Houston he traded up for his best life. L- living his best life. Hey, does he uh, know Brady, this is only two rounds? <laughs> yeah. Do, do you know you're not going to get the picks that you're you're not going yeah, to use those? You, um, you don't get to so play one of today. our one of our top three guys went. So we do need to watch a little bit here. Um, maybe, maybe put a feeler out in the chat. Let me see. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we're at the point now where a fourth would probably get us a considerable distance to yeah. compared to what it would do in the first. I'm going to send an offer to the Cowboys of our second fourth rounder, our compensatory fourth. That if we can move up and get Braswell. You mean the one that was... Uh, downgraded on us in yeah. cheating fashion. The one that Thank we got NFL. screwed. So I, I got to tell you, I was very, like, I, I've never felt better having an NFL GM go like, yeah, we were pissed too. It didn't make any sense. It was, it was like so <laughs> was often. Great. It's like, hey, it we're just kind of like out of the loop and we don't understand all the inside mm-hmm. information. And then we find out later, oh, it's because of this and this and this. And the team knew the whole time. So having actual Brandon Bean come up, like, no, we had a call with the NFL the next day because we were like, what the hell, man? You, you told We checked in multiple times during the season and you told us we were going to get a third round pick. And all of a sudden it's a fourth. What the hell? Um, and I had a, a really is, extensive conversation with Nick Corte afterwards. He's like, yeah, mm-hmm. I still think you guys got screwed. You should still be pissed. Is that formula like secret, even from yes. the teams? It's just like a shield formula and like the teams don't even know what it is because that seems I, absurd. Like, you know, I smoky back actual, room espionage, like what is going on? Like, I, 
I think it's that the actual ah they, they did not accept our trade, but they took a running back. So God bless them. Um, okay, hey. That the actual rule on comp picks is made in the same rule, the same room as where they decide what a catch is. So, <laughs> and what a swivel hip drop tackle is is a yes, all of that same yeah. room. That's a dirty room. That is a dirty, dirty room. It is a dirty room. It's where, um, oh, what's his name? All right, oh. our trade has been accepted. Right. I gave up our second fifth round pick to move up a couple spots. Nice. So now the quick question is, I did it for, in my mind for Braswell, but does anyone have a case to make for Tyler Newbin here if we were to take uh, one or the other? I think we've talked through that we think the safety depth is a little bit better, but I will say we have a chance to take safety one, the first, you know, the number one safety, our choice there. Um, is there a case for Newbin or uh, do you guys support Braswell? I So... I like the idea of defensive end. My only qualm is Brandon Bean. I I wonder if he's going to want a guy knowing what what Hyde and Poyer meant to that secondary and what they meant to the defense. Having a guy that has that type of versatility to with a very heady player to play all over the place. I mean, just does everything. Getting a guy like him to step in and have Mike Edwards, who is still very young. You can extend him beyond this year. If you know, halfway through the season, work on a contract. Now you got your two safeties for the next five to ten years again. And then you, you I mean, you're you're shoring up your defense. I, I like defensive end, I do, but my problem is with that is we've already got Epinesa, we've already got Groot, we've already got Von Miller, at least for this year. So you're talking a guy that's getting thirty to forty percent of the snap share as Newbin is a hundred percent of the snap share. Uh, if he beats it out, I, I do think there's a chance that even if you pick him here, Edwards and Taylor Rapp are still the starters mm -hmm. uh, for this season. Um, and my, my argument here would be to, to make, to make Epinesa a, a backup we got in the seconds. rotation. Yeah. So, but yeah, um, I am. I'm going to go Braswell. Um, I do think that some of the position, uh, premium comes into play, and for me, yep, absolutely, yep. the biggest one is the the conversation we had with the drop off. Um, mm -hmm. I think that there are one right now. There's literally no safeties gone yet. No safety has been drafted yet. Um, so I actually, you know, in oh here the first one just went, and it wasn't Tyler Newbin. No, it um, wasn't anybody we talked about even. <laughs> uh, here, hold on. I'll. Uh... Wait, that was the Packers after they signed yeah. McKinney. Okay. I just love safeties in Green Bay. Hold on a second. Greg's turning into uh, Brandon Bean, getting a little antsy. I love it. Well, you know, maybe there's maybe there's potential in there too to you know take a couple of those fourths or some other type of package to move up into the third. Yeah. yeah. You know, because like um, because I like Newbin, um, I I just like Braswell more. You know, there's 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 a lot to there's a lot to say in Newbin's behalf, um, but I mean, like making making Epinesa not not the um, sorry, I don't know why I was thinking of him as the main edge richer when Grudet's already there, but like bumping yeah. him down another level, you know, and having having that option of you know when when miller's done because it's either this year or next and have, having someone already on a rookie contract ready ready to roll into that position um, you, you can sign me up for that when you know maybe we can bring in one one of these lower later round day three safeties and give them a chance to get coached up yeah so just on principle i was trying to mess around here to see if anybody wants to but there's no fun trading out of a draft that you on a pick you don't get to use um <laughs> yeah but i do think this is a, a great spot where where they would try to get back into um a a third round pick and, and try to be able to package some of those different pieces um to be able to go up and then end up with one of their safeties of choice but again you're still talking about 
I don't even know who their preference would be. Newbin, Kitchens, Bullock, Bullard, Bishop. Mm -hmm. You know, the, there's a lot of guys here that people like. Sean Baki yeah. is really intriguing. Um, Judge Malik loves, what is it, Dariuson or whatever it is? Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, Dadrian Taylor Demerson. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of guys here that. I think are very, very intriguing. And th that was the impetus for it. I, I think there's a chance that you can make the case that Newbin might be, you know, ranked a, 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 sl a smidge higher than Braswell, but the drop off at edge is significantly more than the drop off at safety. And I still think we can get a guy here. I don't know if there's any safety in this draft who's going to come in and start day one. Like maybe there isn't. It's the reason that in this mock, no safety was taken in the top 50 some picks. Um, maybe the top 60 actually. Um, so the fact that we got to that point and didn't see anybody go kind of tells you like, Hey, maybe there isn't anybody who's going to come in and beat out Mike Edwards or Taylor Rapp immediately. Um, so I do think there's a chance to be able to go there and still just get a guy who they can put into a good position. Uh, and that, you know, I, I know Tyler Newbin tested really poorly. His RAS score was pretty terrible. Um, but maybe that helps us. Maybe he falls and we end up getting him later yep. because of uh, yeah, poor, poor, Poyer's Poyer's RAS was terrible too. You know, like, yeah. I mean, uh, Micah Hyde wasn't very good. Became, Micah Hyde yeah. was barely above average. Yeah. Um, all right. So final thoughts, we, we ended up with a receiver that we really like without needing to move up in the first, we ended up getting a guy that honestly, I think is graded much higher than where we got him, you know, mm -hmm. all the way down at, pick 57 I, I think that that's uh, a really nice spot we got ourselves an edge rusher and a receiver we still have plenty of ammo to have fun on day two instead of nine picks we still have eight picks uh, on on day three to be able to mess around with um maybe we package some of those up for a third rounder but we'll start with you thomas how are your thoughts walking away with xavier Leggett and chris braswell i mean you're talking to plug and play guys to to impact per, you know a guy like xavier Leggett on this offense i think like you said, even on the new kickoff rule, what he presents there is is impactful. But a guy that has inside outside versatility is going to be a big time, you know, addition for this offense. And a guy that really, quite frankly, even if he is a little raw, he has time to kind of learn and to be an understudy, which is great. Yeah. You have players yeah. that he can under Curtis Samuel, under you know Stefan Diggs, under you know Khalil Shakir. That's awesome. And then Braswell. I mean, what a better situation for a guy, even if he isn't going to be a starter, to be under Von Miller, to be under Greg Rousseau, to be under AJ Panessa and get that tutelage. So two very good, you know, impact players. And with Braswell, like you said, a guy that probably should have gone higher than you did. Yeah. yeah. Chris, what are your thoughts on what we accomplished here tonight? Yeah, exactly. A, a lot of the similar. Like if if we had taken an edge at, you know, 28 or managed to trade back 29, 30, 31, somewhere in that range, like, and, you know, kind of flip flopped, like I would have been ecstatic. So to get them this way is, it works just as well, in my opinion. Yeah. And Leggett has, Leggett has serious upside that, that is untapped. And, yeah. you know, we're, we're in a position like we talked about where he doesn't have to be wide receiver two immediately. He doesn't, he doesn't have to be a, a pressured option immediately. And to, to bring that, that beast that he is onto the field, like that's, that's awesome. And on it, like, I'm, I'm really happy with Braswell at, at where we got him. Like, I, I think there's serious upside to, to his game. I also think he's a guy that has some Leonard Floyd similarities uh, with the length and, and with his you know production that we've seen there. Xavier Leggett, I know a lot of people use the AJ Brown comp, and I think that is, um, you know, a, a ambitious comp for him. But it's not crazy. Like when you see some of the plays he makes and some of the crazy sideline catches, and I know I think it was Ben Solak talked about like it's he jumps up in the air and then levitates for a little bit. And then it seems like he goes up another level and then catches the ball. And he always catches the ball. Um, and just having that kind of ability that we haven't had a guy in a while who is a crazy contested catch guy that can go up and do it and has awesome strong hands. And, you know, th there were times where he's up in the air and he's already in the air and he jumped too early and the defender has a chance to kind of fight through him because he isn't grounded to the ground any longer. And he was so big and strong that the corner couldn't go through him. And it didn't matter that he was already up in the air because he's 225 pounds and, and built like a, you know, a brick. So having 
having that kind of skill set is exciting. Um, again, if if they if Brandon Bean did the the small trade up we did and took Tyler Newbin, I wouldn't have been shocked. I, I think that that's absolutely in play. I think those are the kind of guys um, with with going through there. I think Braswell is a guy that we might see go at the end of the first round. I don't think he's going to be a late second rounder. So that's a guy that I, I think, you know, again, we, we stack that board that way. Once we saw Braden Fisco, um, I wanted one of those three players. And once we saw one of them make it, we got to move up with only giving up our, our later set uh, fi- one of our three fifth round picks, our later fifth round pick. Um, that's an easy one for me. I was really happy with it. We talked earlier the way that the board fell. We saw that run at receiver go. I wasn't comfortable trading down. I like the idea if maybe Brian Thomas is there and, and they like him or A.D. Mitchell or whoever it might be, maybe they run to the, the podium and make the pick. Um, but with the run that went, and again, it started right with Byron Murphy here. So Byron Murphy went, Cooper DeGene, Brian Thomas Jr. I, I don't think we would be in a J.C. Latham, but Adonai Mitchell, Jackson Powers Johnson, Xavier Worthy, six of those seven picks right before we picked are all guys who would have been strongly on our board. So when you see a run like that go, one, Brandon Bean has shown us in the past, he might move up a couple picks to scoop his guy. Mm-hmm. If, if, say, they like Xavier Worthy over Xavier Leggett, or they like Lad McConkey over those guys, or they like Keon Coleman, whoever that is, maybe they make a small move up. But with that kind of run going, once we got past Troy Franklin, who was the first pick in the second round, if we move back, some of those spots, Arizona is always a pick I reference, a pick 35. Um, mm-hmm. At that spot, all the receivers we wanted would have been gone. We would have moved down to pick yeah. 35, and none of the guys that we wanted would have been there, we would have been in, in a really difficult spot. So um, I'm happy that we stuck and took Xavier Leggett at the pick we did. Uh, I, I like getting Chris Braswell and getting a, a powerful edge rusher, uh, like Chris said, the you know SEC sack leader, uh, to be able to bring a guy like that in. I think that's fun. And we're wrapping up this full the, the two rounds of the draft, and let's see who the Chiefs, the Chiefs wrap up with in the final pick of the second round. They take Patrick Hall and offensive tackle. So Tyler Newbin didn't even get taken. So um, you never know how these things work out. That's a spot you can move up and try to snag him in the third round. I think this was a lot of fun. Uh, Everybody in the chat, you guys were awesome. This was a lot of fun. I know a lot of our folks from the uh, Cover One Slack channel were in here hanging out with us. I really appreciate it. This has been a a great time to be able to kind of play around and do these kind of exercises. I'm looking to host one of these again uh, later on as we get closer, usually uh, right before the draft. We'll try to uh, set this up to be able to do it uh, maybe that Monday night before the draft or something getting closer. Um, We'll talk with some of the other shows. We'll have some of our own GMs and some of the different people in there, but I'll get some content creators uh, from across the space. Some of the guys who did it tonight, we'll do another one as people build up their boards and get a little bit closer, all the other rumors and things going on here. But uh, uh, Thomas, why don't you let people know who you have coming up here? Uh, you mentioned it, hinted at it earlier. What's going on in Buffalo late night on Thursday? So this Thursday night, uh, 7 p.m., obviously on cover one, Buffalo late night, I have Wes Mitchell, um, who uh, covers uh, Gamecock Central, uh, big network. They do all different you know, USC coverage. He's going to be coming on talking all about Xavier Leggett, telling his story. In fact, he has some interesting information about uh, the belief about Xavier Leggett and the Buffalo Bills from those around town in South Carolina. So uh, be sure to tune in this week, 7 p.m. Uh, look forward to talking to you all. Awesome. Uh, you will find Chris Seth over here hanging out with us at the Greg Thompson Sports Show, hanging out with the guys at the film room, uh, contributing across the board at Cover One, doing a great job. Uh, Chris, anything fun that you've uh, been working on? I know you've done some some fun different projects here uh, with Cover One lately. Yeah, so Eric and Ant have their wide receiver draft comps coming up this Wednesday at 7. That's a show that uh, got pushed back by the Red Wedding so, um, you know, it's been it's been a long time in the making and, you know, they've, they've put a ton of work into that. So that one's going to be a lot of fun. And then upcoming between now and ho- hopefully more than a week before the draft, I'm going to finally finish going through my roster measurables and then um, do uh, my bills relative athletic size, um, you know, colloquially known as bra size. So that's a that's a people favorite. Um, I'll get that out to the people a um, week or so before the draft, hopefully. I'm a big, big fan of it myself. Uh, so yeah. thank you guys very, very much. Appreciate it uh, for Thomas and Chris jumping on here with me tonight. The chat was awesome. Everybody jumping in here, having a good time. Uh, but on behalf of Thomas and Chris Seth, I'm Greg Thompson. You've been listening to the Greg Thompson Sports Show. And-